I'm Michael Stinger. I'm a researcher at NVIDIA. And what are you presenting here at SIGGRAPH? So what we're showing here is uh, the world's first four-wheeled AR display uh, in a wearable form factor. And we've been presented here on this robot head um, because it simplifies some of the calibration issues we have. And the idea is that we are doing foveation and hardware, so we integrated two separate light paths for creating a wide field of view, low resolution, peripheral view, um, coupled with a high resolution, low field of view, fovea inset. And what's the, what's the total field of view that you've been working with? So the current version offers a total field of view diagonally of um, over 90 degrees. And the fovea inset um, is way smaller, it's about uh, 10 degrees. And I saw that you've got, so you've got a micro display in there, is it an OLED you said? It's an OLED with a full HD resolution and that, um, that allows to, to um, go up to the acuity, acuity limits of the uh, of human perception. And so just for, yeah, so for clarity, ha what's happening each time, so an eye moves, what happens in that instant after an eye moves? So in order to calibrate that display for that eye movement, we have to mechanically, in this case, update the display position of the peripheral view and full view view, so that we are basically always lock on the, the both displays on the pupil as it moves. Okay, so the, and it has to happen very, very fast to happen in between the eye movements, that's the idea? Yes, so when you're doing a shift from one gaze direction to another gaze direction, when you're applying a saccade uh, in technical terms, then there is a time window called saccadic suppression where, you're actually, where your brain actually blinds you to, um, to not show any, any distorted image. So the, the, in this like 50 to 60 millisecond time frame, we have time to update the display in position from one state to another. Um, so this is the, the, the latency we can, we, can, um, we can live with for updating the display. And what did you say the resolution is of the augmented content uh, in, the, in the center region? In the central region, I think in this version it's about 10 degrees, but this is, this is something that can be adjusted by uh, changing the size of the, of the fovea inset uh, or the, the display um, and the distance um, of the display with respect to the eye. And so what are the difficulties in, in getting this commercialized or in people's hands? What, how will people... Uh, yeah. What's the difficulty here in commercializing this technique? So, so there, are, I would say there are several difficulties right now. Um, so first of all, you, you need an eye tracker that that um, that delivers robust eye tracking data with a very short latency. Nvidia is actually doing some research on that to get that done. Uh, so you always need to know where the person is looking at to update the display. Um, so this, the, the movable part that we integrated they add a lot of complexity to the system. So um, since the this, this system needs to be always in a calibrated state, um, it, it, it has to be updated at a, at a high frequency. Getting that done is a, is a research project of its own. So then there are a bunch of um, challenges that we have to overcome for blending those displays into one homogeneous view. Um, so you're basically overlaying two different pixel grids uh, um, pixel patterns and get them aligned so that they are perceptually one one view um, and having the right blending function and intensity calibration. This is this is a uh, this is, those are parts where we where we have to apply more research. And uh, see so what is I'm just curious what is what am I seeing here? Like there's a board in the back of the head here. Yeah, so we we built this robotic head. Um, as a calibration device for, for this display and, and uh, probably also for other research we are doing in our lab. So what you see here is a Jetson board um, that um, is able to get the information from the cameras and drive the display to different states and also change the gaze direction of the robotic head. Sorry. So 
So is is our computer running this whole thing and then bringing everything into yeah. the back of the system? Yeah. So we, we, we for just for receiving the frames, we actually two we are uh, using two Raspberry Pi uh, boards and they are streaming the data to the computer. And the, the, the main processing is then happening on the on the Jetson board. Interesting. So wait, two Raspberry Pis are doing what processing? So they are basically just grabbing the frames and transporting it to the, to the computer evaluating it. Got it. And so... Uh, so this, is a, this is a prototype that, that has been created in a, in a, a pretty short amount of time. We, we rely completely on off-the-shelf components for cameras um, and um, actuation. So um, for like a second version, I, w I would like to have an actual camera that has the right pupil size um, as a human pupil, or maybe even an adjustable pupil. Um, and then we probably need a little bit more customized hardware to realize that. So this whole head and the, the wearable come, uh, consists mostly of 3D printed parts, which can be easily recreated. Um, so this is um, this is a prototype also for the for the head.